Okay, hello everybody. Uh, thank you for joining me this afternoon and uh, thank you to my team too. I have a handful of people here after a long work day and a long trading day. And uh, there are a bunch of you from all, I see a lot of names here I know, but so a lot of people I don't. So wherever you are in the world, uh, thank you for coming today, tonight, and this morning, spending some time with me. Uh, the plan today, and all of this is kind of intertwined. I'm going to start by introducing myself. Most of you know me, but just in case you don't, I'll tell you a little bit about me and what I'm about. And if you do know me, I might still tell you something new. And then the rest of this presentation is really very tightly interwoven. It's not going to be, you know, point by point here, but we're going to talk about trading psychology. I will share uh, really what I've learned over the past decade of thinking about this subject in a lot of depth. I want to tell you about Tradecraft, of course. That's why we're here. I'll tell you what Tradecraft can do for you and how to get started. So to get started with me, uh, I'm Adam Grimes. I've been trading full time since 1995 with a couple detours to explore some other opportunities in life. And I've been very fortunate to have the opportunities that I've had. Some things make my trading a little bit different. You, you won't find many people who have traded the range of assets that I have. I'm not a stock trader. I'm not an options trader. I'm not a future trader. I've traded all of these and more. I've traded every liquid asset class that a U.S. investor can trade. I also have traded uh, tons of different styles. My Most of my trading tends to be what I kind of call short-term momentum. I've traded mean reversion. I've traded indicators. I've traded patterns. I've traded relative value plays. I've traded a lot of options too. So, you know, a lot of different ways to trade different time frames. I spent many years of my life down in the one-minute chart, five-minute chart, and I also do quite a bit of trading on the daily, weekly, and even longer-term portfolio holds. My style is basically a discretionary style. But even here, I'm a little bit weird. I'm a little bit weird. Maybe that's the theme of the, uh, today in that my discretionary trading is very tightly structured and controlled by quantitative and statistical work. I've done probably more quantitative work than most discretionary traders, let's say that. I also have written extensively. I'll show you where to find that on the next slide if you don't know already. And for many years, I've worked as an advisor and trainer to institutions and hedge funds. I also spent some time on the New York Mercantile Exchange, and I've had a lot of opportunity to interact with traders who kind of cover the full range from uh, floor traders to bank traders to other institutions to people trading at home. And I've, I've seen it all, and I've been very fortunate to work with people. Outside of markets, uh, I also am a classical musician. That's my formal training. I still work as a composer and pianist. And if you're interested in that, you can find that with Google. And I also, for many years, and this is what I really have not told people this clearly before, but I've worked quite extensively as a hypnotherapist, and that's very relevant to what we're talking about today. Uh, why a new training program? When already, as, as the slide here says, I have created extensive resources. My blog has hundreds of thousands of words, and if you want to know what I think about something, I've written on many trading topics. It's very easy. Google's done, of course, a great job of indexing that. If you want to know what I've said about, I don't know, moving averages, mean reversion, Fibonacci, whatever, all you have to do is Google that term plus my name, and you'll probably find links to blogs and sometimes entire presentations on topics. So there is a lot of stuff out there. I've also written two best-selling books on trading, one of which is considered to be the definitive resource for technically driven trading, a uh, gigantic free trading course. The uh, There's uh, the nothing like this in existence. And there are even several universities that have used aspects of that course and their finance coursework. Uh, I also have created some premium courses looking at specific areas and ways to trade options, pullbacks, different ways to operationalize patterns and tons of interviews. Also a series called the Hudson Sessions, which you can check out. So the point is, there's a lot of stuff out there. Why do I need to make another course? Well, Despite all of the stuff being out there, and I also apologize in advance, uh, sitting right here in the middle of a major city, and there's sometimes sirens and street noise. So you'll probably hear a fire truck here. It's the, as I say, the urban soundtrack. But despite having all of this stuff out there, I get several times a week requests for more material. 
And the two most common things that I see are people asking for a specific work on trading psychology and a detail or a detailed program for, it just kind of answers the question. People say like, hey, Adam, I would work really hard, but what should I work on? Or people will say, uh, you know, I'm working on this. I'm spending all of this time on this. Is this the best way to, to spend my time? And so what I see is that people are willing to work very hard. People are willing to put in the hours to get the reps, you know, to, to really do the work, but they don't know what to do. And over time and some other work, which I'll lead you through today, this provoked me. I, I don't want to say inspired. I think maybe provoke is more accurate. Uh, but this provoked me to create this new program. And this was really centered around seeing that there's no solution out there that tells you if you come to me and you say, hey, I'll spend a lot of time, exactly what should I do to develop the skills of trading? It's hard to find an answer to that question. There's also this tremendous gap between how insiders are trained and what's available to people who aren't insiders, to the rest of us. And when I started, I certainly wasn't an insider. I had no idea. Uh, who are the insiders? Well, I would say probably the best model of this is prop firms. And some prop firms are getting pretty bad press right now, but that's not what we're talking about, not where they take fees and then you know basically works as a bucket shop. So they're kind of misappropriating funds. You're not even really, that's not what we're talking about. There are these old school prop firms, maybe is how to think about them, where you have maybe it's a, a big trader or a pool of capital. There's company capital and they hire traders to train. They hire traders to trade the company funds. So it's obvious that they're going to hire those people and give them the responsibility and the risk. They're going to train those traders very carefully. And many prop firms have these very structured programs that you just don't see outside of that environment. The other place we really see this with some consistency, well, it was on the on the old trading floors where you would have clerks come in and they would you know, hold hold piles of cards for weeks, months, years, and then eventually be taught to trade. And this also happens within families, where if you have a family that's a successful trading family, it's normal and natural that they will train other family members or friends somehow. If you're not in that circle, kind of good luck. You know, even if you uh, worked with hedge fund traders, who have been hired and it's kind of sink or swim there. And there are also prop firms where you're just thrown to the sharks trading your own money with leverage and you know, good luck. The So I wanted to bring some of these, I, secrets is really not too sensational. I wanna bring some of these secrets to you and to share these very effective tools that can move your trading forward. Also, um, I have some serious issues with trading psychology and the way it's taught. And we'll talk about that. Now, uh, so over the years, in addition to all my other work, I, because I, I enjoy teaching, uh, I genuinely love to teach. And before and while I was learning to trade, I was also spending a lot of time studying the art of teaching and you know, learning how brains work and assimilate information and been through a lot of formal teacher training. And I think that kind of informs some of my coursework, but I have continued to work one-on-one -on -one with individual traders. And again, these cover the range from college kids who have yet to place their first trade to traders who've struggled for a while. Sometimes people come to me after losing millions of dollars trading. I'm not exaggerating, not making that number up. Or uh, people who had decades long trading careers and now they want to try to trade in a different way. Classic examples probably coming from the floor. And so I've worked with these people to help them figure out what kind of trader they could be. And many of those people, you know, when you think about that resume I just listed, many of those people come to me with a lot of other experience. And this experience in many, many cases has included working with trading psychologists and some of the top names in the field. And of course, you know, in the course of our work together, I didn't dig for secret information, you know, what does so and so does teach you? But I certainly asked questions and what I saw, and many times the feedback that just came pouring out was I did all this work, I paid all this money, I'd worked with this famous psychologist and nothing, it's absolutely worthless. So why does this happen? Well, if you, a lot of what passes for trading psychology is just other therapeutic modalities repackaged for traders. Folks, that can be great. If you have something that can be addressed that needs to be addressed with one of these other approaches, then it might 
fix you as a trader in some very serious ways. But it doesn't always work. In fact, I would say it usually does not work. And most trader psychologists, not all, uh, I have some very good friends who are psychologists and traders, and I would consider them to be the best in the industry, but most of the people who are teaching and using psychology for traders are not traders themselves. So this means they don't understand certain aspects of the trading game and the advice they give is just off target enough to be maybe significantly harmful. Here's kind of my, my first title to slide manifesto, and I realize you can't have a manifesto that you, you know you can't like drop and throw around a row. So here's a single slide manifesto on trading psychology. Here's what I think we need to do to properly use psychology. First, we have to understand how we see, and this is not as easy as we think because the what I'm saying here is that when you see something whether it's, you know, if I pick up a pencil, you don't just see the pencil. You have all of these associations with the pencil, and that's true with every single thing you perceive. A lot of schools of meditation are actually designed to try to get you around behind that, and it's not an easy thing to do because it's how our brains work is to see something and to immediately create the associations. If we couldn't do that, we would have some serious limitations, right? Uh, but this is a problem in the market because when we see a pattern, that pattern might actually be there but our perception of that pattern also says a lot about us. It's the thing that sees as much as it is the thing that is seen. And we look at the market, we perceive the market through filters, through models. So our first job is to make these filters as clear as possible, to make our models as accurate as possible so we can connect with the objective reality of the market. And here's point two. There is an objective reality of the market. There's a school of thought, and I'll show you in a moment, that says you don't really need to worry about what the market does. You only have to focus on your beliefs. And it's just not the way it works because your uh, next time you get on a commercial airline, that pilot is not just trading his beliefs about airspeed and aerodynamics. His beliefs are aligned with how the plane works, how, how physics works. And it has to be that way in for traders. And, you know, I know some of you might be philosophically minded and, you know, you might say, well, isn't it all an illusion? And we can have that very interesting discussion over several glasses of wine, more than happy to entertain it. But the reality is, uh, even if there is some like metaphysical thought here, it's not where my trading account lives. It's not where yours lives. Your trading account lives in the world of the subjective reality of the market and is going to be subject to that. So we have to understand what's really there in the market. We have to learn to see statistically. And in the process of doing this, we align our perception of that reality. So when we look at the market, we see what's really there. Now, once you've done that, that's hard work, that's a lot of work. This fourth point here, understand what correct action should look like is relatively easy to do as a standalone. But of course, you can't do it as a standalone. Once you understand how the market moves, it becomes obvious where the trading edges might be, where some trading edges might be. I shouldn't use that word, a trading edge is not an obvious thing, but it's obvious where we might want to dig for the treasure and then we have to do the work and the work refining it. Once we've done that though, <laughs> So once we've done all of that and we know how the market moves, we know what we should do, we're not done yet because here's where psychology gets really interesting. You can 100% know what to do and be unable to do it in the market. I train traders who have outlined very clear trading plans. If the market does this, I will do this. If the market does this, I will do this. And then you come back at the end of the week or the end of the day and you look and you know in discussing with these traders and yes, the market did this and then what did you do? Not what you said you were going to do. Had you done what you said you would do, you would have made money. So it's very possible to have a winning plan and to be unable to execute it. We need to remove our remove blocks that stand between us and perfect execution. We need to have some kind of plan to evaluate results, to monitor our own state. When are you getting emotional? When are you likely to make a mistake? And to act as your own self-coach. Enter Tradecraft. So Tradecraft is a program that I've been working on very intensively for I would say for really the past couple years with intensive focus over the last year and even more over the last few months. This is when I first started telling people about this in its current form. 
I wanted to use the phrase, this is not a course about knowledge, which is a head scratcher, right? Because you might say, wait, did he just say I won't learn anything in this course? No, what I meant was this is not a typical course where you go and you get knowledge. It's like we open your head and we pour the knowledge in and you have learned something. That's not the way this works. This is based on experiential knowledge. So this is based on you doing things. Then certainly there, are, you know, there are a lot of videos, there's a lot of information to take in, but the real learnings happen here when you assimilate this and the only way to do that is through your own work. There are 11 chapters, a blend of video and written and some audio content, and all of this centers on four key pillars, which I'll talk about um, as, as we go along here. The goal of Tradecraft is to get you to the point where you understand yourself, you understand the market, and from that you have been able to create a trade plan that matters. And I know it doesn't sound exciting, but without a trade, without a good trade plan, you don't stand a chance in this game. Trading's difficult. And once you have that plan, then as I said, we need to work on the skills to be able to execute it and to implement it. Here are the four key pillars, life lenses, this is a set of questions. It says evidence-based. I'll talk about that in a moment. Questions that are targeting various aspects of your personality, how you want to trade, answering the question eventually, how should you trade? Skill sequences. These are these these are cool. I like these. These are drills, but they focus on very narrow aspects of the trader experience. So we shine this laser-focused attention on you know, sequentially different aspects to build up our strength. Market blueprint workshops. This is a framework for going to the market, for asking questions of the market itself, and for learning from the market. I like to say this is a way to write your own trading book and enter architect sessions. This is how you can actually change yourself. We'll talk about all of these. So the life lenses. This is a set of 150 big questions. And these are questions that I have collected from my own work on myself as a trader over the years, from working with, you know, there you can find many sets of questions for traders, many like trader inventories, personality inventories. And most of those have some useful things, but they're not complete. And, you know, I've used these in different coaching context. There's also a tremendous body of literature, scientific literature and research on this type of work. And we've gone through, we've read the research, and I think we've dug out the best of these and kept these elements. And we really have a, a very powerful set of questions that will drive you to thinking deeply about yourself, to discussing with yourself or you know, perhaps with me. Uh, of course, you, know, the, you, you could ask a bunch of questions, but the answers you get are going to be only as good as the questions you ask. And you can have a high degree of confidence that these are very finely tuned questions. They're dripped out over the length of the program and interwoven with the other work. Here are just some highlights. Um, you know, I won't hit every one of these. Uh, you can read the slide, but we look at the resources, the financial realities, the limitations. You know, too often I see people who are trying to trade in ways that just won't work. Where if you just made a, it won't work because of the reality of their life situation. Like if you have a full-time job, you probably can't scalp index futures. But if you made some adjustments and did something else, you can have a very successful trading career. So it's really figuring out how all of these pieces fit together, drilling down to learning how to set goals, how to set the right kind of goals, and then how to extend your creativity, not only in trading, but beyond trading to life in general. And that's a topic that I feel pretty qualified to speak on. Uh, skill sequences. So randomness is really the problem for traders. And this leads us to the deliberate practice mistake. What's deliberate practice? Many of you know, but for those of you that don't, deliberate practice is a fantastic way to learn a lot of skills. If you want to develop sports skills, if you want to develop skills on a musical instrument, uh, what you do with deliberate practice is you break it down, you break this skill down into sub skills and then you work on each individual sub skill over and over and over you know if you're a, if you're a pianist you might play a scale thousands of times you might even play two notes hundreds of times making minute adjustments and you know imagine if you're hitting a tennis ball you, the thing is you'll get consistent feedback in these disciplines. If, you're, if your body is aligned the right way and the racket is exactly the right angle and the ball is coming from the corresponding correct angle, you're in a very consistent outcome when you hit that ball. 
However, uh, the problem is that in financial markets, it does not work. And we still see people kind of repackaging advice from sports training and sports psychology for traders. And it's an absolute waste of time for traders. It's actually worse than that because the market is what we call a wicked learning environment. That's not a, you know, that's not a value judgment, but the two technical names are a kind learning environment and a wicked learning environment. And this has to do with how tightly feedback, how tightly results are tied to your actions. And in a kind learning environment, very tightly tied. Uh, you know, if you that ball comes off of your hand when you're standing on the line the same way every time and your body's aligned correctly, it's going to go in the basket. Uh, however, in the market, you can do exactly the right thing over and over and over and still have bad results. The way I kind of d explain this jokingly is imagine a child learning to do math. And let's say the child has an insane teacher and the teacher is going to give feedback has nothing to do with well, how good the child does. You know, may, may, maybe she does uh, a lot of extra credit, gets every question right, goes on to the next chapter, gets everything right, gives it to the teacher, and the teacher just screams and you know, berates and, and fails. And, you know, another day, maybe the kid just can't be bothered and sticks a wad of gum, turns the paper, and the teacher says, this is wonderful work, A+. plus." That's what the market does to us. Um, and so this makes it hard if you have a losing trade you got to ask a lot of questions that center around, did I make any mistakes or was this just a random outcome? Same thing with a big winning trade. You know, a lot of people will tell you, look at your winning trades and figure out how to do more trades like that. It's a great idea, except in the market when those both those winning and losing trades trail a big deal of unpredictability and outcome. You know, what if just by chance you did everything wrong on those winning trades and you happen to make a lot of money because, you know, I mean, I don't know, we can think about lots of reasons, right? And this makes it exceedingly difficult to learn from the market. It also messes with our emotions. As humans, one of the things, even people with deep training in quantitative fields, people have very bad intuitions about randomness. I don't know why, um, you know, one possible explanation is that maybe there was no evolutionary advantage to being able to weigh probabilities. Imagine an early human out in the savanna and the grass moves. You have two early humans, one the grass moves and one human says tiger and runs. And the other human says, okay, so statistically speaking, that could be a tiger. It could be something else. It could just be the wind. Well, what happens? Uh, you know, over many trials, the statistically minded person is not going to out survive the person who just runs. And that's a little bit of a silly example, but it is worth noticing that there's very little in our brains that are naturally aligned to help us understand randomness. So what do we do about it? I am, here's one solution. Now, I also tell you one of my goals here. So I, I love this program we've created. I, 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 I'm not really into effusive marketing. Those of you who know my work, you know, you know I don't do that. Uh, but I will tell you, it's no exaggeration to say, this is the best work I personally have done in a decade uh, and this is this is also the best thing out there. And I know, you know, I, I know most of those other programs out there. There's truly nothing like this. I think Tradecraft can transform your trading. I hope it's. I hope you agree, and I hope it's right for you. But I know. Not everybody here is going to make that decision. I know for one reason or another, this is not going to be the right time, the right thing for you. And maybe in the future it will be. But what I want to do for you today is if you walk away from this presentation, you say, okay, I, sorry, I can't do Tradecraft today. I want you to go away from this presentation better. I want to give you something that you can use going forward that you can shape your trading and think about. And this is the structure here. I want to share the rough structure of the skill sequence, the skill sequence, sequence, as I say here. So the first thing we focus on, and I've talked about this in some other interviews, is to learn what randomness feels like. Now, I don't use that word lightly. And I know some of you have very deep quantitative backgrounds, much you know more formal math education than I have. It's not hard to do, by the way. But most of you who have those formal educations, 
still probably don't have great intuition around this stuff. It is absolutely appropriate and valid to discuss feelings and subjective experience here because that's what but that, that's what puts the you know the foot on our heads and mashes us down in the market is the emotional reaction. So one thing you can do is take a deck of cards or several decks of cards and just shuffle them and go through and note the number of runs, how many red and black cards you get in a row and how does that line up with what you expect. You got to do these things in a specific structured order and you do have to do a lot of trials and you got to keep notes and you have to do what you can to provoke your own emotional reactions. Once we've looked at this, you know, super abstract flipping through cards, the next thing we do is attach it to kind of some fake PL. Now you know it's fake PL and you're not having like these gasping reactions either way, but you can begin to see some continuous maybe at first threads and connections to these totally random outcomes and emotional reactions. So far, we're not really setting the world on fire, but here's where it gets interesting. Then you take these cards. So, you know, if I flip through this deck and if they were well shuffled, whether I get a red or a black card is completely random, right? It's, it's no, no outcome, no predictable outcome at all. So, what you then do is in a simulated market environment, you use those card flips to trigger long or short trades. And there's a lot we do about it, you know, there's a lot we do around this, we build up structure, but you're then experiencing specific outcomes in these, this totally randomly generated world. The next steps are to then gradually increase aspects of trade management. And you, know, you could do that at first with, exits and profit targets. You can then extend some discretion to entries. And eventually what you do, if you do this right, you've had hundreds, thousands even hopefully, of uh, experiences that blend this completely, so you start in this completely random environment and then you're introducing aspects of control, potentially aspects of skill. And over time, you're monitoring your state and this makes you really smart. I don't know any other way to say it. This, uh, you know, in addition to what you will learn from a quantitative standpoint, um, you will develop real wisdom and insight. And I don't, I don't say that lightly. And of course, in the tradecraft work, we also weave this in with other types of work. Um, experienced traders have a lot more experience and you know the old jokes like you know how do you get experience you make a lot of mistakes and hopefully experienced traders drive towards some wisdom and this process lets you shortcut that now there are only so many shortcuts possible because you still have to reconnect this with the experience of actual trading but uh, what we have seen and the feedback that we've gotten from people going through this uh, which you know I mean I've had feedback from years from from coaching clients going through this so I know what it can do but uh, it's just off the charts it will exceed your wildest hopes and dreams if it's done right and if everything if everything falls into place let's talk a little bit about trading edge so what's a trading edge I have hours long presentations where I talk about this. I won't do that today, uh, out of words for the day. But basically a trading edge gives us a reason, it's a set of conditions that gives us a reason to execute a trade such that if we were, if, when we see the same conditions, if we execute the same trade, we're likely to have money over a large sample size. It's still kind of academic, but it basically a trading edge is a reason to put on a trade. It's not easy to find an edge. Most things don't work. Most things people tell you work don't work. Uh, markets also change and things erode. Uh, here's some examples of uh, edges. You can have technical patterns, fundamental valuation conditions, relative value plays, certain volatility plays. You could potentially have an information advantage. What I mean here is no, not insider trading. Uh, go directly to jail, don't pest go. Uh, certainly don't collect 200 bucks. But what I mean is like, you know, let's say you have expertise, like you have a medical degree, you probably know something about uh, some medical companies and there are people who leverage that kind of of knowledge and experience into significant trading edges. Certainly can be done. Ed edges can have to do with how you get in or out of a market. Of course, the best edges will deal with both. It's 
great if you have an edge on both. Uh, it's also worth noting that an edge is not buy and hold, it's an excess of buy and hold. So indexing is not an edge, even though some people think it is. And I would say that this is one of the major tasks of trading. It can be a joyful task, it also can be a very challenging task, uh, finding these edges and maintaining these edges. And I love this quote from Jack Schwager. There are a million ways to make money in the markets, the irony is that they are all very difficult to find. And if you want to ponder something after this presentation is open, spend time thinking about this quote, because Jack is absolutely right. It seems like a paradox, it seems like a contradiction, but this will explain much of the confusion you see out there. And speaking of confusion, a lot of psychologists seem to be confused about what a trading edge is. Here's a famous quote, I'll read this, and considerable detail. So this is from Trading Beyond the Matrix, and this is response to can you give an example of a trading edge? Sure, here are several examples. Understanding you don't have to trade every day. Understanding position sizing strategies. Being aware of your thoughts and feelings. Knowing your reward to risk ratio. There are many such edges, and you need to learn how to recognize them. Well, I'll tell you, none of those, is, none of those things is an edge. And if you doubt that, you say, well, maybe maybe Adam misunderstands. So what's the definition of an edge? It's a reason that you could put on a trade and make consistent money. Do you think that just being aware of your thoughts and feelings could be that kind of reason? If you had some special intuition, but I've never seen it in my entire trading career, somebody who can do that consistently. Uh, but certainly these are things that could support an edge. And yes, if you're not mindful of your thoughts and feelings, if you don't think about reward to risk. If you don't understand position sizing, you're gonna blow yourself up, but these are not trading edges. Why are these mistakes made over and over and over in the field of trading psychology? I think a lot of the psychologists have never found an edge themselves. They haven't done it. They don't, they don't know how difficult it is to find and maintain an edge. Also, I will say, divide and conquer is a valid strategy. If you are trying to deal with methodology and fix an edge, and also fix psychological issues at the same time. You don't, the bottom sways, right? You don't really have a firm place to stand and it can be very difficult to work on both of these things. So there are times, and we do this through the program, where it makes sense to focus more attention on one side or another. But I will say, without an edge, if you don't have a trading edge, and you know, if you think back to your trading career, your trading experience so far, um, and you know, I know people, these hundreds of people here cover a vast span of, of experiences, but we've all struggled at some times, right? And remember that feeling when you knew you didn't have an edge, you knew that what you were doing did not work. And that's part of the experience of being a trader is coming to those realizations and knowing I have to do something better, I have to find something better. And the Market Blueprint Workshops and tradecraft are one way to do that. What this is, it's not, these aren't like fill in the blank workshops. This is a plan where you go and you look at patterns in the market or you kind of invite the market to show you patterns through this work. This is, this is what happens with a lot of people. Um, I see a question here actually, uh, is a trading, this is a good question. If you have questions, type them into the box. We have a bunch here. I'll get to most of them at the end, but this is this is relevant right now. Is a trading edge quantifiable? Does it have to be quantifiable? Here's what I would say. I think it has to be, here's the way I've thought about it personally. If I'm going to risk my money on it and risk my future on it, which means that I'm doing something. You know, when I say I'm going to trade one way, it says I'm not gonna trade another way. I can't trade all the possible ways. So if I'm going to commit to putting risk behind a trading edge, I do feel that it needs to be pretty well explainable and ideally pretty quantifiable. I will tell you what you're going to do when you start executing this trading edge your trading account, your P&L, your trading account balance, is a quantification of that edge. So it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen when you actually push the button on trading. Now, is when you push the button to trade. Now, is, could there be an aspect of edge that could not be quantified? Uh, yes, you know, the, the, there certainly could be. Your, uh, your thoughts and feelings could be a part of that edge. And your trading account is going to be a real world forward test of that. It is going to be quantified. I think it behooves us as traders 
to do everything we can to structure that. That's the, that, I think of that, that's the responsibility I have to my future self. And if I'm lazy today, if I don't do the work, if I don't quantify it, and you know, some of you know, I'm being gentle, I hope, but I'm talking to you because you've done this, right? You don't really have a plan and you don't really know if your plan works and you, you, it's just not very well laid out, right? This is normal, it, just happens with, it happens with everybody, but I would gently say, I think your responsibility to yourself is to nail things down as firmly as you can. And I do think that means quantifying as well as possible. Very good question, thank you for that. Uh, go ahead and drop other questions in the question box, please. My team will help me get to them. Um, by the time someone shows you a pattern, and you know, I've done a lot of work to talk about the patterns in the market. I stand behind my work, and a lot of that work is very heavily quantified, but it's still been through a lot of filters. It's been through my brain. It's been through some statistical work. And what the Market Blueprint Workshop encourages you to do is to go up to this torrent of the market data and to begin to pull out the gems that will be your edge. And you may want to piggyback on my work. That's a great place to start. Uh, but over time, if you do this, and we encourage many, many exposures, you're going to start to see things yourself. You're going to have revelations. You're, 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 going, you're going to basically find, you, find your own things. And what happens here is that while you're developing deep pattern recognition, you're going to be kind of going back and forth here as I'm showing on the slide or attempting to show between these market blueprint workshops where you're going to the market, pulling patterns out of the market, eventually sort of doing tests in the market, and the skill sequences, which are beginning with complete randomness and then zeroing in on actual robust tests of trading conditions. These do work together. And this is the most powerful way I have ever seen to both develop your own pattern recognition skills and to give you a nice handful of tradable patterns. So after saying some negative things about psychology, let me tell you it matters a lot. You're never going to succeed as a trader until you're, it's one of the things that people say that's absolutely true. You're not gonna succeed with anybody else's system. You're only gonna succeed when you make it your own. And this means that it matches your personality. It matches how you can, how you want to trade, matches the reality of your life situation, matches your strengths and weaknesses. And if you don't do that, you're gonna have a limited success at best. Uh, as I said before, many traders seem almost magically unable to execute their systems. It seems like they have some kind of curse on them or something. Uh, you'll see traders that make a lot of money, boom, they lose it. Make a lot of money again, and they lose it. And I've seen traders trapped in the cycle over and over and over for years. And by the way, you know, my framework is discretionary trading, systematic traders are not immune to this. Uh, there are good reasons why you might want to be a systematic trader. And Tradecraft is going to encourage you to explore that also. But just be aware that systematic trading is not a solution to all your trading psychology woes. They, pop, they crop up there in different ways. At different stages of development, psychology is more or less important. Beliefs are really important. Here's a beautiful and justifiably famous quote from Ed Sakota: win or lose, everybody gets what they want out of the market. Some people seem to like to lose, so they win by losing. Well, it's in the market, but it's kind of like that in life too. Uh, you know, we have people who, and in my work as a hypnotherapist, I see people who struggle with, they're getting the outcomes that they want on one level, but it's not really the outcome they want on a big level. It's not a healthy outcome. And this is driven by our beliefs. And some of our beliefs are very constraining and limited. The problem is it's not so easy to just swap out and change your beliefs. And if you think it is, and we're gonna take issue, we're gonna show you on the next slide, I'll point out to you, take a moment and think about the things you believe. And I would challenge you, I don't think you've consciously chosen a single one of those beliefs. You have had evidence presented, you've seen things, or sometimes we have beliefs that maybe are not supported by evidence, but you didn't wake up one morning and say, hey, I'm going to believe in gravity. It just it didn't work like that. You can't just swap out beliefs. And this is a quote that uh, you know, is almost right. Uh, Van Tharp said, you don't trade the markets, you trade your beliefs about the market. And I said earlier that 
you don't trade the market, you trade your perception of the market. It sounds like we're saying something very closely aligned and we're almost aligned. And then here's a, here's a big, <laughs> it's a big left turn. If one of your beliefs is not useful, nah, you can always just replace it with another more useful belief. This is easy to do. It's almost impossible to do. It's almost impossible to change beliefs. Here's what the inner architect sessions are designed to do. So I would argue that most of, and, and I would win this argument if it, if it were an argument, most of what we do on a day-to-day -day basis is out of our conscious control. While you've been sitting here listening to me, your body has been pumping blood and doing a lot of other things and you haven't been thinking about doing it. It also, you know, you have conversations, you might even answer emails, you might drive. It's terrifying sometimes the things we do that are outside of our conscious awareness. And this is because we have this beautiful and powerful and nearly all powerful unconscious mind that can even affect our aspects of tremendous aspects of our physical body, but it certainly responds to events with reflex, emotion, and habit. And the bulk of what we do are habits. It's not necessarily bad. In fact, if you had to scrutinize every single thing you do, you might not be able to get out of the kitchen in the morning. So we need this, but is it always optimal? And what if we want to change something? It's not this easy. See, the problem is that if you, you can read the conversation here, I won't read it to you. The unconscious mind has these strategies and these strategies have kept you alive. It's, it's worth noticing that, right? Whatever you want to change in your life, well, what you've been doing up to this point, your unconscious mind could very well argue it's worked because you're still here. And it's very difficult to change things because the unconscious mind is going to tend towards stability. It's going to resist change. The problem is that many of its strategies are suboptimal. Many of its strategies, where, where do we form the strategies that carry us forward in childhood? And so many of us, most of us, carry around significant baggage from strategies and adaptations that might have been great when we were six or 12 years old. They're not so great when we're 30 and 40. And our unconscious mind is not just going to change those. So how do we really change? Well, lasting change, I can tell you this with a pretty high degree of confidence, is only going to happen when the unconscious or subconscious mind, I'm using these interchangeably, uh, sees a need to change. And one of the things that provokes that is strong emotion. This is why, if you think about, and I think there are really great models for traders from the field of substance uh, uh, treating addictions, because that's a really hard thing to do. And you're not going to do that without involving some emotion. And this is why most of the frame, uh, the, the, all of the, actually not most, all of the effective frameworks for treating addictions rely heavily on emotional experiences. Now, trauma is obviously very emotional and trauma can create great lasting change, but it's very unpredictable. You know, you certainly would not encourage somebody to be traumatized to try to, and the market, by the way, will do this to us. You know, as traders, we trade, one of the ways, the phrases that I've used with coaching clients a lot of times is we trail all of these traumas and many of them are self-inflicted, but they're there with us and they've caused some small change, but to, to create big, constructive, directed change is a difficult thing to do. And this is why most people only experience a few moments in their lives where they're able to have some kind of catalyst that leads to a lasting change in a new direction. And you can think about the things that provoke that major life events, sometimes religious events and near death experiences are famous for this. We don't wanna to have to wait for those things ideally, right? So um, I've used hypnosis for many, many years and you know, I'll tell you with, it won't sound very humble, but I'm really good at this. I've and th this is for whatever reason I've tried to, and I've had other people try to help me figure out why. Um, I do have significant skill in this field and properly directed, this can help us shepherd and create really profound change. We can slip in under that filter of the rational mind. And an easy way to think about this is, you know, like not for trading, but imagine you have somebody who has self-confidence issues and 
he might have this voice in his head that says, you know, I'm a loser, I'm worthless. Well, are we talking about trading? I don't know, are we, aren't we? Uh, you can decide. Um, maybe, I think we're always talking about trading. And it's not really easy to go and say to him, hey, you're not a loser, because his conscious mind says, well, yes, I am. I've been saying this all along, and look, I, obviously I am. But what we can do with hypnosis is kind of bypass those filters and go speak directly with the subconscious and provoke some changes in different directions. Also, you can, uh, your your conscious mind is a great filter from both directions. And there's a very good chance that your unconscious mind has this reservoir of wisdom. And I say a very good chance, I mean like a 100% chance that your unconscious has access to this wellspring of wisdom that's not normally accessible to you. You'll get hints, right? You get hints, where, where do these come up? In dreams. You'll get hints sometimes in flashes of inspiration. Sometimes you get hints in, you know, maybe the beauty of the natural world or maybe literature. Maybe, you know, you, you'll see this idea that, you know, maybe there's something else there. But the, I put a tool in Tradecraft, which lets it kind of gives us a bucket to put down that well and pull out some, uh, pull out some feedback from your unconscious. And we also use uh, meditation is important. And, it's really hard to meditate, as most of you probably know, I'm guessing. Uh, many of you here have tried to craft a meditation process uh, practice at one point, and most of us try it, and you, know, you just kind of bounce off of it. Well, I've been meditating successfully and with consistency for many years, and I've taken a few very specifically focused practices and shared them with Tradecraft. And I made it a lot easier for you to do these things by, you know, I won't say tricking because you know what I'm doing, but using hypnosis as a tool. Now, this is likely to be the part of the course that you're perhaps most skeptical about. And we have a lot of feedback from people who say things like the, like, like you see on this slide here, um, that, you know, they, they didn't know what to expect from it. Or a lot of people, uh, you know, I very typically get feedback where people say, I thought hypnosis was fake. And now I know it's not, now I know it's real. And you know, here, th this is a great quote, the uh, person saying that not only were the sessions great, but they came out of them with more focus and motivation and it also helped them in other aspects. And I could, you know, again, I could talk for an hour about the hypnosis work in Tradecraft and I'm not going to, um, but it's, it's something that is special and it's something that is not out there in any other form. And there's certainly courses that talk about meditation and trading. And I'll tell you, a lot of experience meditating and becoming a successful meditator in no way guarantees you will be a successful trader. If you doubt that, how many successful meditators are you aware of? I, mean, I won't say no personally, but how many are you aware of and how many of those people are successful traders. It's not at all a given. However, meditation can support a profitable trading process. Uh, what we're able to use meditation to do is to build really fine-grained awareness of your decision process. So you can be aware of mistakes before you make them. And attention and focus is an ever-increasing problem in the modern world, right? How many of you have checked your phone? How many of you have been on Instagram while I've been talking, right? It's just the way, you know, we, we just split up our days into all these little tiny slices of attention. The work in tradecraft is deep work and it requires focused attention and the meditation tools will help you. You know, it's your birthright. Like you're supposed to be able to sit down and dig into something and really get the meat out of it. It's hard for us to do today. And so I put tools in here that will help you do that. Now, all of this drives toward a successful trade plan. And I know that doesn't sound exciting. It's not, it doesn't sound like a great selling point, right? Um, do this course so you can make a plan. Uh, it's not, not it's not scintillating copy, right? However, uh, the trade plan is the document that's going to make the difference between you achieving all of your hopes and dreams and goals as a trader or failing. That is the that that's the common thread between winners and losers. And if you don't have a plan, and you don't necessarily have to have 
a fully maintained in-depth plan. I want you to start there and what will happen is over the years some of these things will become automatic and they won't have to be explicit but a you know even a very old successful trader will have a very clear plan of what he or she will do. So this is going to get you that document that that document is going to be your guide through the entire rest of your trading career and this is how you're going to be successful trading and I think without this trade plan you don't stand much chance and many people uh, all they need to do to kind of snap their results in place many traders who have struggled is just to go through a process of structuring their thinking like this so this is a major thrust of the program and it's also uh, you know worth noting that if you do this right you will have a document that's pretty impressive it shows that you're pretty impressive as a trader and I'm not telling you that so you can feel good about yourself. I'm telling you that so if you're ever in a situation where you need to raise money, where you know maybe it's a family member, or maybe you want to go to a prop firm and say, hey, look at the work I've done, look how serious I am, here's my trade plan. Most people applying for trading jobs cannot drop a comprehensive trade plan on the interviewer's desk and if they do, I'll tell you, somebody having been in that situation, that interviewer is going to really pay attention. So this is the, you know, all of these things work together and the trade plan is kind of the goal of everything. Just some highlights here. Uh, this is a very, very high level overview of the major topic areas that are covered in the trade plan. And we do with all of this work, you know, this is really about adapting this for you. I'm not giving you some rigid, silly structure that you have to do just because Adam says this is the way. What Adam is trying to do here and what Tradecraft does is to help you discover exactly what is right for you. And a lot of these uncertainties, all these questions that have been swirling in your head since you placed your first trade, you're going to be able to take those and investigate those and to nail them down into certainties. And the more degrees of freedom you can eliminate, the better your chance of being successful in the long term. So that's Tradecraft. This is created to guide you wherever you are right now to your maximum potential as a trader. It's a journey, and this is a significant part of your journey. This is a course, as I said, that's very much focused on action and doing. If you just want to watch videos, a, you're probably not going to be a successful trader, and B, you're going to find that this is this is not for you. This is for somebody who is really ready to make a commitment to being the best they can be. The work is hard, but you know, like it's not hard in like a crushing puritanical way. It's hard in the you know think about the times in your life when you were doing something challenging and you were doing it well think about the times when you were able to spend hours focused on the task and those hours just melted away you, you lost yourself in the task because you were so fully engaged in the work yes it's difficult work most people can't do it and that's good news for you because most people will not do this kind of work and this means the people who will do this kind of work have a much better chance of making a lot more money this can be adapted for your own schedule. We initially set uh, we, we set a time frame for this that was a little bit silly and let, let's say optimistic. Um, but we had a group of about 100 traders went through this initially and we got a lot of feedback and we've adjusted that. And one of the things that we've seen is you know you might have a very busy life. Some of you some of you are going to be able to take tradecraft, go into a cave and focus on tradecraft and come out having done the work brilliantly without any interruptions. There aren't many people like that. Most of us are going to have significant disruptions. You have things with kids, with jobs, with travel, holidays, like all these things are going to, are going to pop up and tradecraft is designed so you can stretch for how, however you need it to. The one thing that I would say is I would ask you for, for yourself, not for me. This is, I, I'm asking for future you. If you do need to expand the time you spend on Tradecraft, if you need to spend less time on it, don't stop. Scale back, but put it on your calendar that you're going to spend an hour, whatever you can do. You know, if it's just a half hour a week, okay, it's better than zero. It's a hell of a lot better than zero. If you can only spend an hour, put that on your calendar, make sure you do it, and that's going to lead you back to this with focus when you're ready. Uh, this is also not just for aspiring professionals. I know I've said this over and over. You know, I've been talking about professional trading, trading career, and you might be thinking, Adam, hey, you know, like I want to do this for fun. 
but okay, you know, but let me say, you want to do this for fun, but I'm assuming when you say you want to do this for fun, that you're not a loser. I'm assuming that you don't want to lose for fun. I'm assuming that just lighting money on fire and watching it burn well, actually is kind of fun, but you know what I mean. Uh, <laughs> I'm assuming that you want to trade profitably for fun and tradecraft is for you. This is not just for people who want to build this fully structured trading career. And if you have, if you have looser goals, then you're going to be able to adapt for yourself. That's the overarching theme of tradecraft is figuring out what's right for you and how to adapt it for you. Guided approach to building real lasting trading skills, carefully crafted combination of tools and perspectives. And I also point out the tools for personal development reach far beyond the markets. I've had several people in this first group come to me and say, I'm using the tools from Tradecraft to work and to work with myself for medical issues for other learning issues, for behavioral issues. So this is a trading course that has the potential to touch other aspects of your life in really constructive ways. There's also a uh, vibrant Discord community. I'm in that discussion, so I'll see your questions there. Uh, there's a group of traders who have been through the course, and you know, so th there's plenty of room for discussion. There's an extensive library of free resources. The, you know, I, I began this presentation by talking about all of the content I have out there, and you know, much of it is completely free. And so what we've been able to do is to kind of spider web out from each content area, uh, each focus in tradecraft, and point you to those resources. I've done a lot of blogs, done a lot of interviews, right? Those things become much, much more powerful when you see them in the sequence of what you need to learn for Tradecraft. And they're also regularly scheduled live sessions where you can ask questions. And if you can't be there because, you know, I know how the globe works and I know no matter what time I pick, is going to be three o'clock in the morning for somebody somewhere. Uh, you can submit those questions in advance and I'll address them in the live session. Here's some feedback. Uh, and I will say that the feedback that we're sharing with you today, this was not solicited. We did not go to people and say, hey, give me testimonials. What, we, what we've done is we've gone to this group of traders going through the course and said, just tell me your experiences. And honestly, what I was looking for uh, I was very focused on the negatives, and I'm going to say something that's going to seem kind of silly. My marketing team's going to gasp. I wish we'd gotten more negatives because I was looking for things that I could improve. I was looking for ways, for things that I could do better, for things that I could improve, cut off some of the rough edges, you know. And we've seen some of those things, and you know, we're adapting and making changes. But the feedback was overwhelmingly positive, and everything here comes from a real person who's been through the program and they had the same doubts and questions and the same struggles that you did at this point. And that this is pretty representative of the experiences that people are ha having. So I'm gonna answer these questions, but before I do, I wanna encourage you to get started now. This is not a, you know, think about the marketing tactics where uh, one of the things you're supposed to do is generate a false sense of scarcity. Folks, it's not a false sense of scarcity. We are limiting enrollment. And for the premium option, because that's directly out of my schedule, uh, it is even more limited. So if Tradecraft is right for you, if this is a commitment that you're ready to make today, you need to make this commitment today because there's, there is a very good possibility that we're going to end up closing enrollment. We're going to fill up all the seats we have, and then we'll probably launch again. It might be as late as the middle of next year. It could be as early as the end of this year, but we just don't know. But if this is right for you, jump on the opportunity now. We also do have a premium offering. The core offering stands alone. It's complete. But one of the pieces of feedback we got from the traders who went through it at first was they were looking for opportunities to work directly with me. And so this is why we added the premium option here. The core is $39.95. The premium is $69.95, which gives you three hours to work with me to be scheduled at your leisure, at your convenience through the you know, next several months while you work through the course. And these will be one-on-one -on -one sessions where you and I work together. We also will review your trade plan and it's a good way to get some feedback on the work you're doing. So if this is right for you, 
Go to marketlife.com slash tradecraft. You can also get there just from the marketlife.com front page and push the button, make the commitment, jump in, and I'll see you in tradecraft. Let's go through some of these questions. If you have questions, uh, still go ahead and type them. So um, is it necessary to complete all four pillars in tradecraft to be successful? Specifically, can we skip the meditation hypnosis pillar? To be honest, that stuff seems a little woo-woo to me. It comes from AS. Um, yes, you can skip it. Uh, you, I have to laugh because uh, a couple of people who I spoke with actually used that word. They said, I thought this was woo-woo. Um, I guess what I would encourage you to do, and we also had some people who had meditative practices where they didn't feel they could plug something else in. And in talking with those people, they were getting substantially, you know, I say not fully, but substantially what I was hoping they would get for, they'd be able to get from this pillar of tradecraft. So uh, if this is something that for whatever reason you're uncomfortable with, I guess what I would encourage you to do is give it a shot, give the first session a shot, see what you experience. Um, it's not absolutely essential. It is a significant shortcut. I think you kind of up the difficulty level of, well, you know, maybe not that. I, I think what these sessions do is they're able to ratchet the difficulty level down. You're playing it on normal mode, which is pretty hard. And these tools give you a way, you know, a little bit of a cheat code is one way to think about it, to go in and make some significant modifications to what you're doing. You can do it without it. Try it, if it's not for you, that's fine. It's not going to compromise anything else you're doing and everything else does stand alone. Um, is, I bought other kinds of courses before, but they haven't been worth it. How can be sure that Tradecraft is different from other trading education programs out there? Well, it is different, and I'm telling you that, but there's also, you know, I didn't really want to emphasize this, but I know what Tradecraft is. I know what it can do for you. I probably know some of those other trading programs that you've bought, and I know that many of them they're a waste of money. In fact, one of the things that provoked me to write my book early on more than 10 years ago was seeing my friends spend tens of thousands of dollars on worthless courses. And this is this is one of the reasons I've created so much free content. So I know what's out there. I know Tradecraft is different. We have a money back guarantee. In the first 28 days, if you get into this, you're like, okay, this is not for me, then you can have your money back and more, but wait, there's more. Uh, I actually will take the risk. It actually costs us money to refund you money. So, you know, first of all, we're losing some processing fees, but that's just part of running a business. But I'll buy you lunch. Then you can see that on our website. In addition, you, you get back every penny you gave us plus $25. You can go have a nice lunch on me and contemplate the next steps of your trading career if you think that Tradecraft is not for you. I'm that confident that you're going to get into this and you're gonna be blown away and you're gonna decide that this absolutely is for you. I know it's hard to take that chance. That's why I want to take the chance. I wanna take the risk more than your money back guarantee. That's what I can say from that. Uh, how does this differ from just reading your book? Can I get the same results eventually from just reading your book? Well, this it is quite a bit different. This includes a lot of things that I've learned since writing my since I wrote the book. And this is a, as I said, there's no other program out there that is centered around getting you to do the right things you need to do. This answers the question of, hey, I'd work very hard if I knew what to do, what should I do? This answers that question. This informs and extends the work that's in the book, but this is much more practical and applied. It's a very good question. Uh, when does the course start? Starts uh, on the day we're closing enrollment here, next Monday, the 25th of September. Um, can someone with no experience in trading take this course? Yes, yes you can. So to be, to be perfectly blunt, I think the ideal person has had some experience. You have probably, you know, you've had some experience enough that you're a little bit jaded and you've been kicked in the head and what's the danger? You might have lost confidence. You might have been asking questions like, you know, like we're hearing here. Uh, 
courses don't work, they're a waste of time, this isn't good. So you go into this with this idea that this isn't going to work for me, You're right? That's the danger of having experience. So as a new trader, your advantage is that you don't have that baggage. You don't have the trading trauma. You can skip that. The downside is that you don't have the knowledge. And that's why we have the solution. So what I think you would do if you come to this with no trading experience at all, you're going to need to spend maybe a little bit more time in some of the beginning stages. You're going to need to, you're going to, need to follow some of those threads out to the other material and spend more time kind of assimilating the basics. But if you do that while you're also working through these exercises that shape your perception, you know, when I said the ideal student was maybe somebody who had experience, Maybe I lied. Maybe you have, if you're willing to put in the extra work and you know you're gonna have to do it to build that knowledge base at the same time you build the experience, you might actually skip some of the pain and some of the stages that is normal for developing traders. So yes, come and join as a, uh, as a new trader. And I think this would be a great first steps into trading. Um, what's the meditation for? What's the intended outcome and goal? Primarily two things. One, a as I said, a very focused awareness of your uh, of your decision making process, and this this hits your trading in many many places. So you know, one thing is traders do silly things like ignore stops, and I've written other places about pattern interrupts. Like you know, one of the ways I had a trader I was working with who could not click the button, he wasn't using stops in the market, he could not execute his stop. So what we did, put a rubber band around his wrist, and when, it, when he wouldn't push the button, he'd snap the rubber band. And that's enough of a pattern interrupt that then he was able to function properly. If he'd had these tools, he would have been able to properly align his thinking without having to go through that. And also, uh, you know, as you craft your process or as you find trading candidates, you will be very aware of the influences that all of these other aspects. You know, for instance, uh, so you're looking at the market, you're looking for trades, but what's your recent trading performance been like? How do you separate that from, uh, you know, how do you separate the influence your recent results are placing on yourself from what you're actually seeing in the market? Uh, you just read this tweet that said this trade is really good. You're about to make the opposite trade. You were about to make the opposite trade. What's this doing to your decision process? For most of us, it's kind of like our decision process is a black box. You put in these inputs and then you, your brain vomits something out and you do something. It's this not, you know, at, at least it's not this well examined thing. And so it's going to give you very uh, intimate understanding of how you make decisions and how you, critically how you make mistakes, so you will then not make those mistakes. Uh, also, it will help you maintain uh, awareness and motivation through the course and through, you know, and you, you can, I, I'm hedging because you know, I'm thinking about once you have these tools, how you can extend them out far beyond tradecraft. If you want to learn to paint or, you know, le learn to repair cars, whatever you want to do, learn to code. Uh, these same skills that you develop in uh, shaping your mental forces for tradecraft can be adapted to that. Does it teach setups for today's market? It's going to teach you how to find setups in today's market, Sam. Uh, that's, and it's going to also teach you how to be aware when you say today's market that clearly implies that uh, today's market is not like yesterday's market and this is going to give you tools to see what changes uh, Tim is asking if I could lock myself in a cave how long would it take to complete I know a very subjective question um, if I were going to lock myself in a cave and do this I think what I would probably do is do it twice and I think the first time I do the program I could probably do it in 14 or 15 weeks and then I think the second time I go through it I would see that there were aspects that I wanted to put more time on I might not do the whole program again but I might go back and spend time so I think 14 to 15 weeks is a kind of heroic level accomplishment it certainly could be done uh, could I don't think it could effectively be done in much less time than that. And one of the reasons is because as you're having these experiences, your brain's going to change. 
and your percept actually your brain is physically is physically going to change we know that from neuroscience we know that the things you do here and yeah there's a, there are a lot of nuggets in the program that i haven't shared but you know i talk about uh how we can use the sleep state to actually provoke some of these physical changes in the brain and the rewiring and this some of this takes time so yes this is not something that you can force yourself through in two or three weeks. Uh, you could easily read the content in a day or so, but you wouldn't get anything at all out of that. You gotta experience it. This is really about experience. It's about walking the road. How to fully algorithmic trader benefit from this program? Well, as a fully algorithmic trader, you still have emotional issues. So it's a matter of being aware of that. Fully algorithmic traders are still making decisions. You're making decisions about what to research. You're making decisions about what to implement, when to turn when to turn it on, when to turn it off, what kind of risk to use, what kind of correlated systems to use. You're also, as an algorithmic trader, doing a lot of research on finding and maintaining that trading edge. And what this structure allows you to do is to, you know, if you're a systematic or algorithmic trader, I think one of the biggest challenges most traders face is finding trading ideas. It's very difficult to find things to test. And so we end up sometimes testing tens or hundreds of things without finding good ideas, without, without finding ideas that work. So this market blueprint workshop is going to put you down in the weeds, down in contact with the market in a way that, um, there's a Nassim Taleb quote that says something like, uh, I wish I could pull up the quote, but it's something like, you know, be, be uh, uh, wary of, only doing high level work in a market, high, high level statistical work, because you'll lose touch with the experiential aspect of how it trades. I butchered the quote, but that's the idea. I'll tweet it after, watch my Twitter. I'll, I'll track it down and tweet it. Um, what, this is going to put you in touch with the market in a way that you're going to get insight. I won't say intuition. You're going to get insight that will inform your algorithmic development process. This will in no way replace or sabotage your systematic trading program. And in fact, the uh, trade plan is fully 100% adaptable to a systematic trader. A lot of this work is done from the perspective of a discretionary trader because that's where I've been for the bulk of my career. But I've also done a, quite a quite a bit of uh, quite a bit. Let's just leave it at that. Uh, system development, statistical work, and systematic trading. And so, you know, I can tell you the high degree of confidence that aspect of the work is 100% adaptable. Um, actually, you know, I'm struggling to think about things that would not translate. You are as a systematic trader you're going to be asked to do a lot of discretionary trades. And as long as you understand that that's developing skills that are going to carry over to your systematic trading, that you're not necessarily developing the skill of discretionary trading, that you're looking for that insight that you can carry to systematic. I, I think this can make you a fierce and powerful systematic trader. These tools certainly can. Um, how does this help with those of us who know what to do but just can't do it very often? Uh, it's from Tom. So uh, first of all, we'll challenge your assumption there. Do you know what to do? And the answer to that may be yes. Uh, the There are plenty of behavioral tools that, that address that problem head on later in the program. So that absolutely is covered and supported. And you know, certainly something that I think the community support can also help you think through that. Uh, how would hypnosis work? Don't you need to be in direct contact with a hypnotherapist during the session? Uh, this is from Mian. In fact, you do not. And I can tell you that because in my, and I have worked, uh, I've worked with people, I've hypnotized thousands of people. And I've done it in many different settings, including face-to-face, uh, -face, so in the same room. I've done it over Skype, and I've done it with pre-recorded sessions. And I also have kind of, I've done pre-recorded sessions for one specific person, kind of a, you know, series of uh, treatments, if you think about it like that. And I also have, you know, kind of broad things that are not targeted to a specific person. It's incredibly effective. That, that's the bottom line. Uh, it works in ways and uh, it, it, it works, it works. 
full stop right there. Um, and you'll see you'll see that in the very first in the very first week. Uh, will this course make it easier to transfer between different asset classes from Travis? You're still gonna have to do the work um, because you know I personally, when I move between asset classes, I've been very open about this. Uh, something I it, it's always been a struggle. I'm sorry, I'm looking and I'm looking off the screen, just looking at the questions here. Um, it will make you do the kind of work you need to do to adapt to a different asset class. But if I said you'd be able to make those transitions seamlessly with no efforts, I, I would be lying to you. It's definitely going to take some work, but it's going to show you the work to do. And here's the beautiful thing. Um, I remember some of my transitions from one asset class to another was done with all the care of somebody leaping into the caldera of a volcano. Like I just had no clue. I just jumped into lava because I was an idiot. And if you do this work, it's going to keep you from being an idiot like that. This structure is going to show you what you need to do to effectively transition and how to protect yourself from big losses when you do transition. Very good question. Um, just looking through some of the other questions here. I think we got most of them. Team, did I miss anything that we should get to? Um, what Sam is asking, what software, hardware, materials do I need for Tradecraft? It's all covered in the course. Uh, you will need access to a trading simulator, and we discussed that. There are several options depending how you want to do that, and we do our best to help you with that, but you don't need any specific hardware. You don't need anything uh, far off the beaten path for that. Just looking back through. Okay, I think I got the questions. So thank you. Uh, we went on longer than I thought today, but it's because you ask such interesting and insightful questions. And I thank you for your time. Uh, thank you for your interest and passion in trading. And again, uh, let me say, I'm really excited about Tradecraft and I hope to see you in Tradecraft. Hope to see you in the Discord. I will be in there and there's certainly plenty of chances to interact there and come and join us before next Monday. Last word, I really do think we're going to be closing enrollment. So if this is something you want to do, if you're ready to take this step, do it now. Thank you.